boy. Let me take a. This is actually a, not a, a mixing glass. You know, I like it because of the thing like that. See, it's got the numbers on there like that. I'm not a numbers person. You want numbers, and you got to go to Antonio Moore or Stacy Herbert if you want charts and numbers and stuff like that. Water's my uh, well, my drink glass at night. It's not the reason why I'm emptying this glass. Is because you all are driving me to drink. I'm not supposed to drink. Let me tell you what, what happened. Why am I going to tell you what happened? Let's just pay. I was next scheduled to drink, really, uh, uh, New Year's Eve. But, man, I, I got to New York a couple of days ago, and then I started reflecting on stuff, and I'm going like, what? Um, but first, well, first I want to tell you something. I've been reading this book. Well, I was reading another book, um, The People Know, or I like to say with a little Kamala, uh, you know, accent, The People Know! You know, the Thomas Frank book, he's one of the listen liberal and what's wrong with Kansas or whatever have you. You know, he's one of those people like a, a typical liberal, they're trying to save the Democrat Party or save the Republic or whatever, whatever they think they're doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, Great Palace, I've been reading his book, and as you see, how Trump, how Trump, how the Trump, how the Trump stole 2020, right? Now, it's not, Trump is like a, a thing, man. You put his name up there and like, oh, let me put him on the floor here. Very insightful book. You should be, uh, you mean, know, you got the rest of the you only got less than two weeks, whatever it is. You got two weeks to indulge if you wish, you know, I've been reading it. Um, but I knew most of the stuff anyway. Um, but if you look at that, it's really not about Trump as much as it's about the Republican Party. And I have to t tell you some things. Uh, uh, okay, first of all, I, I, um, I, my undergraduate degree, one of mine, is in, is in communications, okay? Uh, but I've always been interested in media when I say media. But, I just communications. When I say communications, you know, my study was in um, early video you know, with the real, the real, you know, digital video, and um, and TV production. Really, that's where my degree really come from. But I'm self-taught in radio. Okay, my first thing was. Well, anyway, go back to my YouTube channel. You see, there's a lot of stuff you you see. It's just I started. Let me put it this way: I started in radio officially in um, uh, 1972. Okay, with a as poet in residence for this radio program, Princeton University PRB station there. And, you know, did some very innovative things. It was the first people to do, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, and when I got to my undergraduate, my official, like, I kicked out of my original one, <laughs> Frost Community College, for taking over the school. I can't explain that to you, but that's long history. <laughs> I was just up in that area today because I went visited my high school. I'm trying to get something done. I got to go back up tomorrow morning, I think. I got to call them up first. Anyway, that's not the point. Uh, so anyway, uh, so so my undergraduate is actually from Livingston College. It doesn't exist anymore. Part of Rutgers University. They they killed it. Could you imagine? It was a great school. It, it was a school. You have to think of like an HBCU mixed with like Berkeley back in the day with uh, oh you know that 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 school out there in Long Island, oh Westbury back in the day, all in like in an Ivy League institution. I can't explain it. it was an amazing school. It was so good they destroyed it. The Rand Corporation. They destroyed. They they purposely dismantled the school. <laughs> you know, I teach English department. English. I was up at English department. Actually, never. A. B. Spellman. You know, Tony Morrison. My favorite. Pepsi Charles. Had there's people. I can't explain. You know, uh, it was an amazing school. Amazing students. Amazing. Amazing faculty. Unbelievable. Uh. Anyway. Um. So I know a lot about communication. Well, let me, before you can, so, so, since you're going to be turning me off anyway, it's going to be a long video. It's going to be long. I'm re telling you right now, it's going to be long. So you're going to be turning it off, and that's fine. You know, this is for archival purposes only, you know, some thing in the future. Uh, but the way you look at, not media, but the way you look at things, think of a radio. Before you had a radio dial, right? And now you, you like if you, well, so you might turn to this station. No, 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 no. You might turn to this station. You get some AM station and like that. Da, da, da. So, so you have your choice. But usually you would, what I call you would rut yourself. <laughs> you would rut yourself. Like like well, I grew up in the sixties here in New York. So so we would listen to like um, the good guys on WMC, WMC, whatever it was, WMC, whatever it was. And this the AM. 
AM station and WWRL. That was the two things. And then, then WLIB came along and they, they get the FM thing. So you listen to Frankie Crocker and then, then maybe you might listen to NEW. No, you wouldn't. That's rock. You know, so anyway, that's my world, right? Other people would listen to, well, everybody would listen to, you know, News Radio 88 or, you know, WRS. Sometimes you listen to, uh, what's that? What's that Franklin guy? Well, if the Franklin guy that has all the things. Anyway, but, but you know, you would, you, you'd be some stations, but you would very move your, move your, you wouldn't, very often move your dial around, okay? You understand? However, in print, it was different. At least when I was when I was uh, in uh, the, like the Black Arts Movement or, you know, the Revolutionary Movement. You know, see, my, see my nephew up there? He's got his fist raised. Boys start young, you know what I mean? Anyway, you don't see your paper? Oh, Carry him over my shoulder. That's him. You see that? See that fist raised? He did it himself. It was a natural pose. You see, the the boy like a uh, a year and a half at this at this point, less than a year and a half years old, like that. The mother got him in the stroller. You know, when Kamala Harris said she was protesting in the stroller, <laughs> it's got nothing on this kid, right? So I, I try to carry little QJ all around because you know, I think I, I think it's like my grand nephew. So I'm thinking, not me. I'm I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know, two generations or three generations back. Okay, we're back to the point. So, so, so what? So, so what? What you have? What you used to? What, what you have? Like in the print? Now we would, you know, you read Rampart's magazine, but you also read, you know, the, the whatever the, the New Republic, whatever the heck, the, the other man. You read a whole scope of magazine. I mean, you know, I, I had a, I had a subscription to, um, to Eye of Stone Weekly. No, Ray, you know, talk about Eye of Stone. This is what journalism is missing today. You know Iris Stone. You know, you know Iris Stone would do right. These people, you know, the journalists today, they get up there and wait for the press secretary and they put the microphone up there, and then they go back and dutifully try to put their little spin on it. This is what they said. Da 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 da. da. Iris Stone said, Pff, "You go to the congressional record. The least you get. These people have staff. The least they could do is get the quote, go to the in congressional record, see what the cat actually said in the congressional record, or see and see how the things have changed." No man, I'm, I'm not gonna tell journalists how to do their job because. Uh, Okay, let me want to try to say I'm trained as a journalist, but I, re I rejected that. I'm a, there's a reason why I did that because, anyway, so I'm really in, a, I'm officially, I'm an audio dramatist. That's what I am. That's what I do, you know? So if you give me the stuff, I, I take it, augment, I augment with some other research and I can make an audio drama for you and I can make it very quickly. You know what I mean? So if something happens yesterday, I can have it on the air for you tomorrow, even less, <laughs> you know? Believe me. So my my feel is like, like, like I can't explain. It. Okay, so I just this my I'm saying this that's my that's my limited bona fides for what I have to say now. Okay, everybody's in this tizzy over the drunk man. Okay, so I want to read something to you. Like I said, the, the thing I want to read something to you. Uh, when I um I was in New York about three and a half months ago, I went to um, my best bud's house, my best mate's house in uh, St. Louis or Olivet, uh, Missouri, right? He has a lot of all my writings and stuff like that. And I was doing a lot of reading there, getting my body, you know, exercising with the dog. And, um, and so I left some books here, you know, and, I, and that, that that book I said, the Thomas Frank book, I left it there, you know what I mean? When I go back in December, I'll finish reading it maybe, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, oh, actually, I think I also got this, now I'm gonna tell you about this book here. I forget that, that's not what we're talking about right now. But one of the books I left on this side was Krishnamurti, okay? So I made some notes, but I'm going to read a very long passage, I shouldn't say that, from Krishnamurti. It starts, I'm attempt to read it. I'm not a very good reader. I'm an audio dramatist, it's not a reader. It starts here and it goes right there, okay? So be patient. Let me get my reading glasses that I got from uh, the socialized wing of the uh, American situation. I'm a veteran, which means I'm, I'm on the VA system, which means I get socialized medicine. Don't you wish you had some slight mission to write about now? Hey, that's what you get for not supporting the people that wanted that. And that, that's what you get for this, this little... Never mind, I'm going to get that stuff right now. And then get off on you. Uh, there's a question. This thing, this book is organized. Don't, don't worry about it. This book is organized. Uh, and the question is, how can it be silent? I guess it's referring to something else. But uh, Krishna Bharti says, listen, not how do you see... The moment you say how, then you want a method, a practice, which still within the pattern of thought, which is still within the pattern of thought. Let's hold that thought with you. So I have this problem from you. Thought 
has its right place otherwise you and I couldn't communicate with each other. But to learn about communication, I have to learn the language. And since you and I both know English, we can communicate together and learn English. And to learn English takes time. Okay? Let me hold it right there. Let me put my thing right there. Okay, you understand? You're following this so far. So we're all supposed to be speaking English, right? The same kind of English. But obviously, we're not. <laughs> I'm just going to, just my little thing right there. Insight into freedom doesn't take time. And you cannot have insight into freedom if there is the operation of thought or the, mo or the, or the movement of thought that says, I must understand what freedom is, right? This is what Murchie is saying. So there is this problem then. I am used to thinking, which is the only instrument I have. I have been educated, brought up to think. All my conditioning, all my existence is based on that. All my relationship is based on the image that thought has created. Okay, hold on, we're going to get to it. And you come along and tell me, don't use that instrument, you know, don't think. But look, perceive, learn, have an insight. And then I say, how am I to have an insight if my mind is so heavily conditioned? How am I to have an insight if my mind is so heavily conditioned? Now we get into the crux of it. Hold on to your thought right now. So burdened with all the things of thought. How am I to be free of that in order to see the other? Right? You have put the wrong question. If I say, I must be free of this, which is the, me the mechanical process of thinking, I must be free of thinking, you have stated a wrong question because you are not learning about the new. You still have conceived, you, you still have concern with the old. And where you are concerned with the old, you remain with the old. I wonder if you get all that. Let me repeat that. I did that whole thing just to get to this one part, because we're going to talk about this, I think. Right? Here we go. You have stated a wrong question. Because... You are not learning about the new. We are in a new state, okay? This whole thing about, uh, how do you say, you know, how the Democrat, how the voting is, how the that, the that, the that, the that, the that, the that, the that. Let me, I'm going to get back to this. Let me just say this uh, real quick. Like I said, l l looking at the, r the radio dial, when I look at the media landscape, all these still put, I listen to a lot of, a broad spectrum of people. Look, look, I got, I got Bo with the fifth column on right now. I check him out sometimes, right? I, um, it's an emergency. It is an emergency right now, so listen up. But one of the things that, uh, uh, Andrew Yang has a, has a podcast now with some dude that ran his campaign or something like that, right? He had a guest on, right? And this guy is he's not doing a congressman, but he's a libertarian. But anyway, he's not doing congressman. And as soon as I say libertarian, people go, ah, oh, libertarian. Oh. Anyway, but the guy had an interesting insight, right? Because I listened to him. You know what I mean? Who else is going to listen to him? You ain't going to listen to him. You're too busy listening to MSBC or, or listening to your favorite, you know, podcast or somebody to agree with or whatever have you. Anyway, the point is. Uh, so this guy who served in Congress for 10 years. He said, this is where he worked. When he served, in, when he, before he went to Congress, he was in the legislature for, I guess it's uh, uh, Detroit, with the, the water place in Michigan, where, where it is, I think Detroit, right? And he said it was great working in the legislature because, you know, at that level, everybody, you know, you, could, you can get a bill passed because, you know, you talk to the other side of the aisle, everybody's trying to, get the, trying to get the best thing done for the peoples because they're close to the peoples. When he went into the Congress, when he first went into Congress, it was, uh, he thought it was like, not good, right? But now it's even worse because these people, all they want to do is make a lot of money and not do any work. Not do any real work. At least not the work that you think they're going to do because you are too busy. Uh, you, 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 uh, uh, which is the mechanical project. 
you have stated the wrong question. You are learning about, you you are not learning about the new. You are still concerned with the old. You still think it works in the old way. This thing has changed so radically. What happens is there are sides now. There really truly is a team red and a team blue. Nancy Pelosi has more power than a hostess. This woman is a hostess. You heard what I said? She's a hostess. She's in her position because her man, her, her privileged white supremacist, I'm saying it, Anglo racist, white supremacist man, through, 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 through more than likely through, through spoil that he got from the labor of black people, of, of, of American descendants of chattel slavery, earned a lot of wealth, and now, because he had a lot of wealth, he had a big house, a big space, and she could entertain donors. Same donors who, again, had their wealth probably through the backs of black people. Um, to, when I say black people, I'm talking about, again, American descendants of chattel slavery kind of people, right? She had a big house, so she could entertain a lot of people. So she as hostess, then probably that being a hostess into, arguably, what am I say arguably, the most powerful woman right now on the face of the earth because she controls all these, you know, all these political people that are wafting at her thing. Not even Mitch McConnell has much power that she does, okay? And you're going to give her more power by putting uh, uh, Joe, the, 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 you're going to put Joe Biden in place. You're going to give her more power because he don't want to work either. Are anybody following me on this? You think Chuck Schumer is gonna? Okay, never mind. Let me let me stop. Let me go back to this. I'm sorry, I went off. I'm going to go off because Congress don't work the way it does. It used to do. When they, even the, the, the way your daddy thought it worked, or the way the, the way you, it's not working that way. That's all I'm trying to say. When you get to this level of Congress and 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 Senate and Senate, uh, rather the congressional, the yeah, the Congress, Congress and the legislature. And I'm not even going to talk about the judiciary. That's been going a long time ago. I, I peeped that whole card back there with with, Bork, with the Bork hearings. That's been going a long time ago. Right? In fact, they, the Congress, they're so lazy, they throw stuff off to the, to, to, to the judiciary now. Right? It doesn't matter. But the point is, it's not the way you think. The power is not where you think. If you want to do anything and you're too late to do that, you 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 people from New York are going to vote blue no matter who. You, you know what I mean? You're going to put, well, I guess Chuck is not up, you know, but, you know, going off as usual you are concerned with the old where you are con uh, you you are concerned with the old where you are concerned with the old you will remain with the old where you are concerned with the old always oh, oh, we gonna get, are we gonna rescue this party with you oh, yeah, but I wonder if you get all this you are concerned with the old let me get, let me start Christian Percy because that's philosophy. You might not get what I'm saying. Let me just let me try to get to, now that we did the academic part. Let's get to the other parts here right now. Okay, I told you to drive me to drink right now. I don't want to do it. I really don't. I got my Guinness. I'm sorry, man. Let me put my glasses on. All the glasses I got for me. Yeah. They look cool. Open my Guinness because y'all are driving me to drink, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you to drink. Well, you say, my well, brother, what, what do you mean you're driving us to drink? Nobody can drive any, you know, you're a free will person. Da, 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 da. I like to see the head, man, so don't worry about that. I don't do that whole other thing. Okay, like I said, I just came back from St. Louis. In St. Louis, it was interesting, right? Because where I was staying, it's a liberal bastion, whatever, you know what I mean? This is the outskirts of St. Louis. You know, they everybody got Black Lives uh, signs in their, in their thing. And, you know, we're concerned with all lives, rainbow this and, and immigrant that and blah, 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 blah. Sure, they got a lot of, they got, they got some Trump people, but this is this is near St. Louis, okay? Remember, the state is red. So outside of St. Louis, you got these bastions of, you know, when you have you have flags, you know, you get the you get the American flag really big, but you got the Trump flag really big. You understand? Biden ain't got no flag, not like this. So you can see Trump flags all over the place. In fact, what I did, so you have to remember, 
Okay, I told you I'm an audio dramatist, but I'm also an interviewer either. Too, rather I'm an interview. I'm an interviewer also. I love interview. I love talking to people. You know what I mean? When I say talking, I love talking to people over the microphone. So I noticed this guy had a Trump flag. Oh, I said, well, this is interesting. Let me go talk to him. So I have about three or four. The, oh, by the way, if you're, listening, you're looking at this channel, this is me ranting. This is not the thing. Go to the interview section of, of, of this channel. Okay, the, in the place the interview playlist, you see you know, some really interesting interview. This is the guy I was interviewing, right? And I started off really interestingly, like, really interesting enough, you know what I mean? So we made, we made friends. We became friends, let's put it that way. But I wanted to get, I don't want to get what he says. I know what the boy is going to say. I wanted to get this feeling. Why are these people the way they are? And the only thing I can come up with you know, because they had the same talking points, wouldn't move off the talking points. No matter what happens, he would try to bring it back to a certain thing. And I was always bringing it back because, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have technique. Look, let me tell you something. The, uh, like I told the Eugene B. Redmond Writers Club one time there in East St. Louis, I told him one time a couple of years ago, I think I said, I'm smarter than I look. Anyway, what I did, what I said, he, he he's one of those Bible people too, you know, the Christian things, you know. So, I, so we start off, I always see his daily readings, right, that, 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 that. And then I finally got him back and said, well, you know, I'm just into the, 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 those two things, you know, love God, roll your blah, 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 blah. And, you know, basically do unto others that you have to do unto you. So everything he do, I would try to switch, it, get back to those two basic things, which also gave me a lead into to, to explain to him why he's so wrong about his position. But I never said he was wrong. That's the point. Anyway. So I got insight into what I, you know, what I learned from him because of again the, uh, one of the things I did when I when I got my uh, for my undergraduate degree I did an internship um, uh, at at a, at a radio station the biggest radio station in New Brunswick at the time right and there was the head of the copy department um, that well copies where you you write the commercials and stuff like that I'm gonna go into all that stuff but anyway he was into this thing called Est from Werner Erhardt, er, 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 well, whatever, S. And there's this thing, S is like this thing where you take a position and you hammer it. You do not back up for your, right or wrong. Let me take a drink. Oh, refreshing. Right or wrong. Think of, a, think of a Trump person. Right or wrong, you're going to defend that position. Okay? You got that? This it's not even a zombie thing. It's like that's the to get it's like it's, it was like a business thing to get over. You have to push through. You have to you have to convince the other person because the other person has doubt. You've heard of the Mamby Pamby liberals and stuff like that. They all Mamby Pamby. They're they're like I don't know. Uh, what are we gonna do? Oh they gonna do this. Oh they gonna oh clutch the pearls, that whole kind of thing, you know? That's what they are. That kind of person. They just steamroll over them. The, when I say steamroll, let me show you what I mean. You saw this, uh, um uh, Great Power Springs is up and this they call it Brooks Brooks Brother Revolution, whatever it is. And I saw it, I saw it when it happened before I even in the in the two thousand elections, you know, that that Florida thing, right? There were there were uh, operatives. Roger Stone was one of I love Roger Stone. Roger Stone, he's my man. I don't care what you say. He gangster. I'm with gangsters, man. Yo, I grew up in the South Bronx, you know. So y'all, y'all chumps saying, oh, we shouldn't be up, oh, please. He he led a group of people, and they were beating up on them Chad people, right? But more importantly, what happened was Gore was such a punk. Not only did he lose his home state. See, my whole thing, I was through with him. When you lose your home state, you don't even get the electoral uh, uh, votes electoral college from your home state then he deserved to lose but he wouldn't even go all the way and challenge the thing all the way in florida he when the supreme court stepped in he still could have challenged challenged challenge he's a lawyer you all lawyers and, and here's a trick here's here's what i say here's my interpretation because it was black people that would have benefited he didn't challenge for the black people okay i might be wrong let me go back further if I'm wrong with that. Let me go back further. Let's go to the 80s. I worked at Jesse Jackson Canton. When I say the Lower East Side, I, no way, I, I, that's how I first really got involved with internal politics. We the J. Raymond Jones Club at Thin Hall, not hanging out with the people, you know, blah, 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 blah. One of the things back there in the 80s, they wanted to make D.C. a state. If they would have made D, if the D, the Democrat Party, Clinton could have did it. He had the board houses, right? 
instead of making DC a state, they went and and and, and became Republicans and 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 basically became what I call corporatists. I'll get to that in another section. If you would have made DC a state, you would have had two, two black senators and one black congressman. This is in the 80s. Stick a fork in the Democrat Party. If they wouldn't do that for black people then, when black when we were Chocolate City. Just a second. Is it here? I know it's here someplace. I must have it here. Is this it? Gift from Nelson Davis. Where is Nelson? That boy ain't called me. I hope nothing happened to him, man, because I've been working on his. I just started, as soon as I started working on his, 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 his writing, and I was really getting in the groove, and I tried to contact him. He ain't called me back. I got to write him emails. I don't know what he ain't answered the emails. Back when D.C., was Chocolate City. When D.C. was Chocolate City, we could have had two senators and one congressperson. The Democrat Party would have had two black senators and one black congress. What would, how that would have changed everything. So let's forget about Gore. People go back to them. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, this was in the 80s that started with that, whatever. And, and I, I, my, the, the conjecture was I had a chance to ask Jesse this and I didn't ask him. But somebody asked Jesse this because the rumor was that it was in the platform. That's, oh, that's the last time I voted the platform because I never vote for persons. I look at the platform, right? The Democrat platform, I think when Clinton first came in 80, 92, part of the platform was for D.C. statehood. And I hear that, you know, uh, Bubba went and said, you know, Jesse, you know that thing about D.C. statehood? It ain't going to happen. And Jesse still became his spiritual advisor when, 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 he, when he was using cigars and stuff like that on interns. They ain't better each other, man. It's disgusting. Anyway, I got off topic. Sorry. <laughs> I would say... Vote, it matters. It does matter, but not what I'm trying to say. Not on the national level. The local level matters. That's when they do stuff. And then usually those laws get, they, they, they go, they go when those laws, they go into up, because those people don't want to work, work up, upstream. They don't want to work. And usually those laws that come local, that are, that's why the Koch brothers went and raided all those, all those little, you know, paid all those little you know, legislators and those, all those little, um, little, all those other states. And look, I saw it coming too. Again, in 82, I worked for a place called Charge It. Okay, don't worry about it. Charge It. It just, it just doesn't worry. But one of the things they did is a side hustle. I call it side hustle. I think it was their main hustle. They put out mailers. The Republican Party was really, they put out mailers. They're still, mailers are still very effective. Mailers, you get a letter, you know, you get a letter in the mail saying, hey, support us. Mailers is like those, it's like, it's like mailers. This, this, it, they, they, don't worry about that. They still do that. What? What? But but let, let let me go. Let me keep on going with this. Let me let me keep on going. I'm sorry, I don't want to jump around. Okay. I told you it's going to be long. I'm gonna drink this beer. I'm gonna keep on going. So you have these mailers, right? Okay, that's mailers. Remember I told you that that that, that then then what happened? It started. I guess it really started in the '90s, maybe 2000. I remember in the end of the '90s, I used to listen to NPR a little bit like that and they, they started that's when they really started doing this corporate thing when i say corporate thing it'll be sponsored by you know whatever few trustee and all these things it happened when a pbs already sold out they were doing the oil companies and i was always wondering what what are these uh goldman sachs or whatever whatever they would whatever these things i was always wondering but i was always keep my eye not my eye but my ear open because i'm a communication but i have to check the whole landscape of, of, of media right but, you know, um, because I have association with BAI, I'm on the radical end, you know, I'm a Pacific end, you know, <laughs> so, so, so my orientation is really different. If somebody who, who say, for instance, if you just listen to the 700 Club, <sighs> let me tell you, one of the most heartbreaking things ever, when I was living in Delray Beach, Florida, I was living with these old, two old women, they were in the 80s, Miss Essie and Miss Bessie, and they would listen to these, these, the white evangelical southern preachers 
and send them money. I mean, their house was in disrepair. I had a little room in the house. I mean, I, mean, I bought I bought them a new refrigerator. The money they they, they were sending to the refrigerator to 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 the to the, to the, to the evangelical guy telling them to send them money all the time. They could have just bought a new refrigerator. She was so grateful I bought the refrigerator, whatever have you. But in my head, I was gonna say, but you could have did this yourself. It's 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 sad, you know what I mean? And then when you listen to some seven hundred club or whatever these evangelical people are doing, is you gonna like? Man, remember people, they will put on their, it, look, even with BAI, I'm sorry, I'm, I have to jump around. I did an audio drama one time. I'm famous for this. It was a, a I, I say nine and a half, probably eight and a half hour live audio drama, right? No commercial break. Some other time with that. But the point is, um, the point is people listen to that. At least one person that stood. Let me leave that alone because you're not going to understand. I just threw that, I just threw that in there because I like to mention that. That was the long dream. I just thought I'd mention that, right? And when I went, that long dream. That was the outsider. I mentioned that. But BAI was such a thing that we did an experiment one time, you know, because I was an engineer for them also. And we said, you know, people always listen to BAI. And so, you know, the station sometimes would go down at 12 o'clock and you have what's called this white noise. Just and then we said, let's do an experiment. When you bring the station back on, you have to say WBI New York. You know, I mean, you have to get it called you know, like that. And then immediately we said, um, you can call in at, you know, 279-3400, whatever, whatever the number was, right? And immediately people would call in. For the last two hours, the station was down. It was just static. How would you? You see, that's how people, they get rooted, rutted, I should say, rutted into a certain thing. So you got people like, oh, let me jump, go, go back and bring us all back. I know I meandered. Just I said, turn away. <laughs> Stop listening to me. You shouldn't be listening to me anyway. Here I'm in St. Louis. All they do is listen to NPR. You know what I mean? And then with NPR, they have all these things about black people, this and whatever that, and they, you know the normal liberal stuff. And so, and it's like it's, it was weird to me. And I'm going like, turn up, look at the internet. You got on. You can get to YouTube right on your TV right there. And I would put in something, sometimes he would say, well, that's interesting, how would you do that? But they're so rooted in their thing that they can't get out of their thing. So I would say it's not a bubble thing. It's like it's your, your your brain is someplace else. And the stuff that NPR does, tell you the truth, this is like, to me, this is like radio. And the same, I heard the same people, some old guy on the weekend I used to hear, he even sound old now, you know what I mean? He's got a weekend program. That boy been on the air for at least 30 years. Maybe four. He been on the air. I've been in radio since 72. This boy was after me, but I'm I'm just saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> These people, they're... <sighs> and they're playing the same word games and all the rest of that stuff. I don't know what's familiarity, whatever you call it. Anyway, so that's their world. Meanwhile, I'm bringing these books in and trying to, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm listening to other stuff. I'm downloading stuff. Okay, great. I get here. <sighs> MSNBC. Now, I thought NPR was bad. But MSNBC. I ain't heard MS. I, I tell you, I, I used to, when it first came on, you know, where they keep Oberman and, and even when, before Rachel Maddow was even there. And they were pretty good. <laughs> Phil Donahue, the best. Still the best, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But then, you know, I, I had, I, I had gone to Africa by the time this whole takeover happened. I guess, yeah, I guess this whole takeover happened. I say it's takeover. I remember Chris Hayes first came in or something like that. He's supposed to be a Bronx boy. Have we taken away his Bronx card already? I need to take. He's probably in Manhattan right now. Okay, yeah, pff, stay there. You know what I mean? He done lost his Bronx bona fides. If you, you know, forget Chris, you know. Um, and uh, so anyway, I'm listening to this, and I'm going like, this is crazy. It's one big thing of the Trump against this and that. And I'm going to tell you, I think one of the things that makes this, what I call the S kind of mentality, the Trump people with the flags, whatever have you, is that they are, they're almost forced into to, 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 to standing on their square. They're almost forced to do it because the opposition... It's like, I, I can't, it's a psychological thing, I think, you know? Okay, I'm jumping around. 
I uh, did take some notes. Let me just say a little things. I mentioned the flags, right? Okay. Now remember who put Trump in office. Now there, now there's finally some charts going around. Antonio Moore's charts are starting to get around. People start looking because because of Ice Cube, uh, like that. Then then they start looking at some charts and they see how dedicated Black folks has been to the Democrat Party, at least since Carter or whatever even before then or whatever have you. Have they just voted straight that? That's why Nixon again went the whole thing because. Like so loyal to the Democrat Party, and then black people realize they we're not getting anything. We don't get anything. Everybody else come along and they get stuff from the Democrat Party. Whoever is doing it, they get stuff from them. We get no, no, not even no guarantees. Not even like, not even a a, a half-hearted promise. So that's playing on things. Anyway, um, that's playing on things. Uh, but you, what really got him over was remember Hillary Clinton, white woman, right? What got him over last time? White women. White women put Trump in office. Look at the charts. Don't pay. Look at the charts. Right? Um, so I'm thinking, the first thing I think of months ago, I was saying, like, these white women are not going to let Kamala Harris, you know, be the first woman president. Because, you know, she's going to be president, right? If, she, if Biden makes she's going to be president. I don't believe that white women, they didn't do it before. Back then with the with, with the Stanton woman, where these heroes that they had back, the suffrage, they they were racist back then. They wasn't going to let no black woman and no black men or nothing like that be, be before their men. They, hey, Bill Burr did this thing. Come on now. You sort of, I, I just sort of clip SNL. They say, you know, <laughs> the white women been rocking with their men through all of their, all of their, their, their exploitation and whatever have you. You think they're going to all of a sudden leave them now? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But I could be wrong. That's why I'm doing this whole thing, because hopefully I'm wrong. I like to be wrong. No sweat off my back. I'm not a, I'm not one of these people here that says, you know, I got to be right. I like to jump in and be wrong and be proven wrong and say, oh, okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> don't change my life, Eddie. Okay, let me go back to the point. But here's my concern with this whole thing. I forget Trump would ever have it. I want to know because people are stumping. It's really interesting because you're so distracted with Trump. It's Biden has, Biden has, right? My question is, what's Pence doing? It's a fair question. I never hear about what, where is he stumping? What's Pence doing? Is he meeting in the back rooms? Is he pulling some, you know, some, uh, some, 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 some electoral stuff? Where's Pence in all this? Because he's got a stake in this too. Because, well, guess what happens? They show up all their stuff, they get their stuff together. If Biden, if, Biden, if, if, if Trump wins, Pence vice president, what happens in 20, what's the next one, 2024? I'm just asking. It's a it's a question. Just asking. Meanwhile, you got all these people saying, we got to vote blue. We got to vote the orange man out. <sighs> I got you. Go ahead. You know what I mean? I mean, I go straight up uh, Ebro in the morning. I mean, you know, I got back to New York, so I saw something with him like that. I, I don't know. what All these people, all these... <laughs> Unbelievable. And then when, when hey, I'm riding with Ice Cube, by the way. When Ice Cube says, say, look, it, 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 I'm doing black thing. All these other people, he's doing the Trump thing. No, I said I'm doing the black thing. He's doing Trump. And I said I'm doing the black thing. <laughs> they, they, they don't want to listen to this boy. They hear what they want to hear. <laughs> I even heard that. No, man, I don't want to get into that. Hmm. I have to get into that because, like, we go back to, to Bill Burr, my man, Bill Burr. I discovered him a long time ago. He says something about, you know, uh, he did this whole joke, great joke, great joke about how, you know, the the, the month, whatever, you know, how how the the, the you know the, the the gay got June and you know you know black people got February. We know the story, you know, because Black History Month and, and like everything, Black Black History Month. You only had Black History Month, Black History Week, you no know, Negro History Week with black people. Then we got the month, and all of a sudden, everybody else had to have their month. In fact, we have June supposed to be Black Music Month. I used to be music director for WBI also, so I got to say, it used to be Black Music Month. 
the rainbow, the gays, the whoever, the you know, they done took all they took that away from black people. They take everything away from black people. I'm telling you, I'm riding with Q. I'm riding with black people. Okay, actually, I'm riding with I get us Q is not in cult system. Else, you know, it's not. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying let's now. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Forgive me, man. I didn't even drink my whole bottle of beer. See, I don't really. I'm not really a drinker. I can't drink like you. Like you, you know, you people are gonna get upset when. You know, where a person with Hillary lost, there was a lot of hangovers the next day, you know. Mm. I love my kids. It's like medicine, though. Here's the thing. Here's what I thought. Can I say this? I'm not talking to the... Look, if we didn't put Trump into office, we meaning black people, and Democrat Party never did anything, we have to register. Somehow we have to get into their heads if they understand what they're doing. Here's what I say. You vote down ballot, Okay. You get the local people, all your local people that you need in there, okay? Now, remember, even some of those local people, they're going to, even when they go to Congress or whatever, you saw how quick AOC got sold out because of the way the structure is up there. Don't worry about all that stuff right now. I'm talking about lower, your know, um, assembly people, whatever, your state senators, that local stuff, your school, whatever, the local sheriff, judges, that's what you want to concentrate on right now, you know what I mean? And and yes, you have to register to vote. I'm glad you registered to vote because then you got to serve on, on jury duty. Then you really see how the justice system is and why we get screwed all the time. You talk about indicting a ham sandwich. You see how unbelievable. I served in a jury one time. But if you go to the grand jury, you really be in for a shocker. The more black people that get sit on those juries, the better. Okay? But here's the thing. Here's what I say. For me, I've voted since I could vote. Now, when I was 18, I couldn't vote because, you know, they didn't change the law until I was 20, you know, so you can vote for 18. They very friendly. Oh, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were Vietnam era. We were, I was, I was serving in the military. I couldn't vote. They say, hey, if they, if they're old enough to go and die in Vietnam, they need to vote until they change the law. It doesn't matter. So, so what, so I always love to vote, you know? Uh, and I always, you know, I vote the way I feel. I vote my conscience. So my conscience, there's no way I can vote for Biden. You can forget about that. Harris, Barrett. Just dumb. You know, I ain't going to, no way, right? I'm not going to vote for Trump, not because anything. I just, I don't feel like it. And plus, I vote in, I go down to Virginia, I vote in the swing state. Hey, I might vote for Trump, Trump, just to mess with people. I doubt it, but I'm just saying it, right? But here's the thing. If we vote, and like, say, for instance, you know, you're, 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 the, if you're in a blue state, for instance, and you know that, uh, say we're in New York right now. Now there's no way Biden is not going to get New York. So you conscious black people, you should not. Okay, if you have to vote for Biden for some stupid reason, vote on the Workers Party or the, the, there's different lines. There's the Democrat line. There's the uh, family, the Workers Party, the family workers, whatever. I used to vote on that line. I think there may even be a liberal line. Like, vote on another line. So you don't want to give the Democrats any any. Thing. And plus, if you're working, at, well, I think it's the the the, the worker families party, whatever it is, you give them more bona fides for the next thing, or green party, whatever you give them more bona fides. I might vote for greens down in, down in uh, down in Virginia just to give them more, you know, more boost, right? But what? But above all, do not vote. if you're working in a blue blue state or a even if you're if, if you're another person, you red. You know, if you know you're in a like Missouri is a red state. There's no way Trump. Well, there might be a way. There's no way, and I wouldn't trust the polls, by the way. There's no way that Trump is going to lose Missouri, okay? So if you're a black person, uh, or, let me say eight, let me talk to eight U.S. If you're an eight U.S. person voting in an all red state that you know that Trump is going to win, or an all blue state that you know that Biden's going to win, don't vote for them. Because what you want to do is you want to deny them, uh, whoever wins, you want to deny them the popular vote so that they know for certain. This goes for everybody. You want if you're voting this, just don't vote for those persons because when they win that state through the electoral college, which is what they rigged for, right? You don't want them to have the popular vote. You want them to say, "Hey, you got elected, but you ain't got the people behind you." That's the whole point of what I'm trying to say. Okay? So what you do in those in those states? So 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 like say for instance, uh, remember, voting they call it a voting thing, but it's, you go to a polling station. It's a real poll. You know how they have those exit polls? Those are fake polls. 
and they call you up on the phone, those are fake posts. The reason why Donald Trump went the last time, because there was two things, two factors. One, you didn't realize this, but the radio man, you didn't realize that was a radio revolution. Donald Trump winning in, two, in 2016, whatever it was, was a radio revolution. He got all his talking points from Michael Savage, and Michael Savage was talking to all those areas, not the big city areas, he was talking to all of those areas that became Trump supporters. So he, all Donald Trump was doing was, was saying what Michael Savage was saying, and that's how he, he won. It was a radio revolution. Just like just like the uh, uh, what do you call that, Khomeini, uh, the Iran was a was a cassette revolution because he was from France. He was making these cassettes, so that's why he could just walk in like that. That's why Donald Trump won. Look, I'm giving you real history. History is not going to hear from anybody else. Why? Because everybody else is stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're stupid. They don't know what they're studying. They, it's right before their eyes, and they, they they're reading some stupid. They're reading some books. Some. <laughs> Some academic that's, that 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 never been on the ground, never worked a campaign. If they worked the campaign, they they been some sort of bubble. Please, they don't know what they're talking about. Believe me, 2016 was a very radio revolution that Donald Trump pulled pulled off. Right? Okay, that's settled. Right? You follow me on this? The whole thing about the Republican Party, they're inspired from the, from what happened in 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 the, in, in the mid 70s with the the um. Uh, the Est Revolution, okay? <laughs> That's what they are. The Christian, same thing. The Christian, they, they later on, in, in, in let's say the, the, the 80s, you know, into, the, into the 90s, Christian. <laughs> That's what it was, okay? Whew. So, what's your job, ADOS, if you're in a blue state or a red state, and you know what, instead of road for them, you write in ADOS101.com. For those of you people like me who who who, who have the, the code of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., then you can alternate between ADOS101.com and uh, Produce Justice, which is Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Produce, so I have, I have, I'm, you know, in, in president, I might say ProduceJustice.com, and in um, in the Congress, I might say, or if, I don't even have a Senate. I, I, got, I haven't, I haven't, I'm going to, when I get to, I'm going to, Put out my ballot. I'll do one on that and see who I'm going to vote for and research that and see who's what, 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 what. But the point is, um, because that's a true poll, that becomes historic. When historians look up, when they look up stuff, they can look up some pew trust with a poll like that. But the real poll is the, the actual electoral vote. That's your poll. That's a real poll. That's why you go to a poll. That's the poll that you're going to, you know? So if if you have all these people voting ADOS or produce justice, then they it gets tallied. And a hundred years from now, when they look back in the records, they say, and in this poll, look, they had an AD. What's this ADOS? What's this produce justice? Well, produce justice. That's the one. That's the one they they talk about how to get rid of racism, right? That that ADOS one that that that, that was the, the the North American descent of chattel slavery making that statement. That's what you want to do in this in this election. Okay. Now, if you're in a swing state, and for some reason you got some sort of, you know, you think that you're going to change it, then do then you then you should vote the way you, you know, your little whatever you're going to vote, you know. But if you but if you're in an all blue state or all red state, your vote means diddly. What no, I'm saying, it will mean more if you write in, if you can. I'm going to just say that I want to spoil your ballot. If you write in, you understand. Everybody follow me on this. Okay, last thing I don't know. Let me leave that. That's just I said it was just going to do a voting. It does matter, but it only matters if you understand how it matters. If you're not thinking old thinking like Christian Burtz, if you have a, if you understand, you don't want to old think, new think, come up with stuff of your own. That's a little simple message from a drinking man. That would be me, T from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet. Excuse me, letting you know what I only suspect.